in the fifth chapter of medical school pathology we will be dealing with the general topic of genetic disorders of course understanding that every disease like every cell has genetic uh, counterparts nevertheless there are still some diseases which are regarded as genetic by virtue of a variety of factors uh, I want to mention that genetics and uh, the especially the recent advances in the last several years in, in DNA and uh, gene splicing and so forth have just completely revolutionized medicine and uh, I can really say that almost everybody that graduates from medical school within a few years sometimes less than that feels terribly inadequate when it comes to uh, gene topics. Uh, it's probably the only real uh, branch of pathology or medicine in general that it has a uh, massively uh, exponential rise in understanding and discoveries compared to all the others. Nevertheless, there are some classical things that are regarded as uh, fairly constant. Genetic diseases, uh, like I say, is just about every disease because every alteration in the cell in the cell is ultimately the result of its genes, its DNA. Some diseases we can understand as being classically environmental and relatively independent of genes, you know, like for example, you know, a gunshot wound. Uh, in reality, most diseases are a combination of both, and uh, uh, let's keep it at that. Let's talk about mutations, because we know that uh, DNA mutates. The classical type of uh, mutations which result in patterns which we will call diseases can be of three types. They could be uh, genome mutations, which involve uh, problems regarding a whole chromosome, for example, lack of one or an extra one. Uh, chromosome mutations are usually visible through the routine types of uh, chromosome banding that we do, and they're more in the realm of things like, you know, deletions, translocations, things that happen on individual chromosomes. Uh, many uh, mutations, or classically mutations, uh, are the result of gene mutations. And uh, in many cases, this could uh, result from a single base pair error. In many diseases like that, classically the lysosomal storage diseases, and of course the prototype uh, hemoglobin S, or sickle cell disease, is the classical example. Uh, a gene mutation can be a deletion of a single nucleotide or a substitution of a single nucleotide. If you kind of visualize your double helix, well, just knock one of those little uh, nucleotides out or substitute it with uh, something that uh, shouldn't be there. So here we go. We have our DNA ultimately it's going to uh, be transcribed to be messenger RNA, and then it will have your um, translation down at the ribosomal level. Uh, the classical understanding of single gene diseases would be in uh, sickle cell disease. There are uh, beta alpha, I'm sorry, beta chains in hemoglobin, and in the uh, beta A, which is normal uh, beta chain for hemoglobin, you have A. Does that sound like adenine? Yes, it is. Well, in the uh, disease which causes uh, sickle cell disease, this adenine is substituted by uracil. So rather than having a GAG, which codes for glutamic acid, you have a GUG, which codes for valine. And on the basis of your beta chain having one single wrong amino acid, in other words, point mutation, on the basis of one single wrong uh, trinucleotide sequence. 
you have a disease which could be very, very, very serious in the heterozygous state. Uh, we talked about uh, point mutations in sickle cell in which uh, valine, uh, uh, there's a valine glutamic uh, acid uh, substitution. You can also have uh, mutations in non-coding portions of your DNA, uh, parts that are uh, very uh, much involved with uh, transcription. So a mutation in a non-coding sequence, which doesn't code for a specific structural or functional protein, might result in a defective transcription process uh, in terms of uh, taking your uh, DNA and converting it to a messenger RNA. There are deletions and insertions uh, called uh, frame shift mutations and uh, s often this involvement is not in a multiple of three. Uh, there's a classical disease called fragile X syndrome on the X chromosome in which you have trinucleotide repeats many, many, many times. Something goes haywire, and for some reason, the uh, nucleic acid starts repeating CGG, 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 resulting in uh, a protein which is then not made, which is uh, critical in the neuron development. So these are the classical ways we understand uh, gene mutations. Uh, gene mutations if you think about it, can interfere with protein synthesis. If you believe in the one gene, one polypeptide, or one protein theory, uh, we also said they can suppress transcription from DNA to messenger RNA, or they can produce an abnormal messenger on RNA on the basis of the fact that there was an abnormal DNA. These defects can carry over into translation into protein manufacture uh, level at the level of the ribosome, or they can produce abnormal proteins without impairing synthesis. So all of these possibilities are common, and not only are they, well, all these possibilities are possible, and not only are they possible, but they, they do happen. Uh, genetic disorders can be thought of uh, as being single gene mutations, following the classical Mendelian inheritance patterns, uh, which is going to be a very good fraction of what we'll talk about in this chapter. Or uh, they can be thought of it having multifactorial inheritance, multigenic, multifactorial. And the best way I could give you an example of that is for you to understand that your protoplasm is a result of your genes many genes. And if you develop a disease on the basis of that protoplasm, you have to remember if that protoplasm is soil, your relatives are going to have similar soil. So I, I don't think soil theory is anybody but my own, but that's the best way I can understand it. Then we're going to be talking about diseases which are the classical chromosomal disorders, either defects of chromosomes uh, or uh, additional chromosomes or absent chromosomes, identified by a wide variety of techniques. Okay, let's get into the classical Mendelian inheritance patterns. Uh, I think we already understand what an autosomal dominant disease is. It's a disease that uh, can be present if either allele is uh, present. In an autosomal recessive disease, the disease is present only if both alleles, homozygous, are present. In autosomal dominant, heterozygous uh, conditions produce disease. And of course, in the classical sex-linked, uh, which is generally regarded as recessive, uh, these are changes involving only the X chromosome. And we're going to give examples of the diseases, maybe talk about them a little bit. We're going to talk about the general patterns that are specific to these three different types. And we're going to show uh, trees, pedigree trees, which are classical for all the types as well. And we'll be doing that in the next 10-minute uh, clip. And I thank you very much.